ladies and gentlemen, my heart still bleeds for the people in the Bahamas. Now, they did allow some of them to come to the U.S., especially if they had family here. They let them come. Um, and many of them did come by boat to Florida. And there's a, a there's quite a population of them down in Florida, you know. And Trump has this thing about he doesn't want any immigrants here that have any type of melanin in their skin. But the situation in the Bahamas and those of the ones that are across the border are very, very different. Number one, those people in the Bahamas, they were not coming in caravans to America. Many of them were satisfied with their lives in the Bahamas until Hurricane Dorian came and uprooted their lives. But they weren't coming here like that, not like they're crossing that U.S.-Mexico border. Okay, they didn't want to leave until their life was disrupted. Those folks are leaving for a whole different set of reasons. And you see those large caravans, thousands of them in a caravan. These folks in the Bahamas never did anything like that. So there definitely should be exceptions. And as far as them having visas and um, passports, look, they're lucky if they can find that stuff and all of that debris down on the ground. You know, they should at least grant them a temporary visa so that they can get out of there if they need to. But, you know, we got to consider who is in charge of this, com uh, in, of this country. He doesn't want more black people coming here. He didn't even want them Puerto Ricans here. Look at how Puerto Rico was treated. And now those folks that are coming in from South America, they're caging them up, separating them from their kids. He just, you know, I can promise you if this was a bunch of people in Canada that were white trying to find shelter, he wouldn't have had a problem letting them in. This would have been a non-issue. So... You know, this is definitely kick them when they're down moment, you know. But then again, this president never shows empathy at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, this came out in CNN September 12th, 2019. 2,500 people are listed as missing nearly two weeks after Hurricane Dorian hit the Bahamas. Wow. An estimated 2,500 people are listed as missing in the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian crashed ashore nearly two weeks ago, the government said. Dorian flattened homes after it made landfall on September 1st, and remember, it lingered for nearly two days. Killing at least 50 people, officials say the death toll is expected to go up as search and rescue crews scour through the ruins in Grand Bahama and Abaco Islands. So, you know, they are going with names that were given to them by the citizens and they have a um, hotline for people to call in anyone that may be missing. All right. So they were urged to call a hot nine or visit a social, um, social services office, which is handling the missing people register. And my guess, it's probably going to exceed the 2,500 that figure. I, I just have a feeling it's going to be more than that. As we are able to cross-reference our data sets, we will be able to inform family members and reunite survivors with loved ones, he said. Dorian tore 
through the islands as a Category 5, the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in the Bahamas. The first sweep of hard-hit northern islands where some 70,000 people have lost almost everything has been completed, including at least a first check of anyone in need of rescue, food, or water and an assessment of damage and sanitation needs. Daniel Gajewski of Fairfax County, Virginia, Urban Search and Rescue Team. Lately, it's been a lot of reconnaissance of a lot of building structures. And then from there, we're getting a pulse on the locals, said Kajuski, who was deployed through the U.S. Agency for International Development, or you said. You know, it's amazing how now um, Americans and contractors will be able to go there and make all kinds of money now, won't they? But if these people want to come here and pick up their lives. Oh no, they can't come here. We we can't let anyone in. Why? Why? Dorian's official death toll in the Bahamas now stands at 50, but we know that it's way higher than that, police said. Through the grim number is expected to rise. The Bahamian prime minister Hubert Minus said the government is working to set up temporary housing for those who lost their home, adding that he visited shelters in New Providence that are providing temporary housing. Okay, so they are providing something for, you know, the residents of Abaco and Grand Bahama. He warned against recirculating false information that was spreading discord in the community. So I tell you what, just them searching for the dead bodies, that's going to take months, y'all. You just got to look at everything they got to do. They got to remove the debris of all of those flattened homes and and then locate, try their best to locate the dead bodies. And that in itself, that's going to take some time. That's going to take a while. Going house to house, building, you know, from one building to the next. That's going to take some time. And we may not know what the number is until later on this year. But just like Puerto Rico, it's going to now be a lot of work that needs to be done in the Bahamas after this whole ordeal is over with them getting the bodies. And then, you know, they're going to try to rebuild. And it's difficult to rebuild in those islands. You know, Puerto Rico, they got hit back in 2017 and they are still struggling to build up that island again it's not easy you got another hurricane season you got hurricanes that can potentially go and just wipe out all the work they have done for the last two years i mean it's a risk but i know people want their homes built back up i, I certainly understand that you know especially if this is where they've been their whole life and many of these people, they, you know, like I said, those folks weren't trying to run from the Bahamas. Many of them were satisfied with being there, you know. So I think it's wrong for Trump to even make that kind of comparison and trying to act as if it was the same, you know. I don't, I don't know. I, we, we've heard of Mexican gangs. But how many of us heard of gangs from the Bahamas? Come on, you, you don't hear that. You don't hear it. And if there are some, they sure 
don't have the same type of notoriety as some of these Mexican gangs do. So it's definitely not the same. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.